Glamour Girls, a group of big boys having fun in a strip club. A bodyguard named Inzeribe stares at her with deep desire. When leaving, his boss discovers his ring is missing and asks him to search the club for it. The madame denies the girls took the ring, but the bodyguard insists on searching himself. They are reluctant to let him, but he bets his money it's on one of the girls. She curses. He searches and finds it on her. The madame apologizes profusely. He walks out without making any demands. The girl swears she didn't steal it. Madame fires her and they exchange courses. Security. security kicks her out. We are introduced to Madame Donna. Good morning, Donna. The she he ho of a professional escort agency with interior decoration as her side hustle. She's on a call with one of her girls named Louise, aka Lulu, who is vacationing on a yacht with a client. She rejects a call from an old friend, Gemma, as she has to walk. Good day, ma. She's disappointed at the latest stock of girls. They have no professional or academic qualifications. High school certificate, primary school, anything. Show me something. Leave. She shows her true colors. Oh, now I won't just begin to come up cloth for here. Oh, now wait till I want to round the strip for here. The girls leave but are frustrated. One of the girls refuses to leave and rushes back inside. She, she tells Donna she has a degree in zoology and she has younger ones to take care of. So she's desperate for the job. Without hesitating, she strips to show her package. What a peach! Donna is impressed and asks for her name. She introduces herself as Emanuela. She is the same girl who was accused of stealing at the club. Donna shortens her name to Emma. She gets the complimentary card, which she gleefully accepts. Donna gets a visit from a chief in Ken, who requests for escorts for a get-together party among friends. Donna clearly expresses the conditions for such a contract would include a predetermined payment and an interior decoration contract that should have belonged to Chief's wife. Chief gets her a special gift of two bags of cash. While chilling on the words of cash, Chief notices Donna had more than 50 missed calls from Gemma and asks her why she has rejected the calls from her old friend. Donna reveals Gemma was like a sister to her until she did something unforgivable. She broke the number one one. We see a scene of an unconscious man in the hospital being cared for by a woman. The woman is Gemma. The man was her ill husband. The doctor says his prognosis is poor, but she chooses to keep hope alive. She walks away with her son. In a strip club, they have a party. Chief drops off Donna at her home. She gets in to see that her husband had made preparations to celebrate the anniversary, but she was too tired to give him attention. Meanwhile, Louise receives a call from her husband. She lied to him she was still on her networking trip. She tells him she wants to sleep, whereas she is about to get it through the back door. The poor man hypes his wife. Donna gets a visit from Eva, Chief Inkem's wife, who confronts her for stealing the contract. Both screechy, you suck on one ball, and I squeeze the other. Emma gets a visit from her siblings, who complain about hunger and not having money for school fees. Emma calls Donna and leaves a voice note in hopes of getting a client. My Instagram na. Pretty Emma the Stallion, Nicki Minaj plus Kim K. She still can't reach her. Emma has a chance encounter with Gemma. Emma complains she has been trying to get an audience with Donna for weeks, but has been unable to. Emma gives her an advice. Find yourself a job. Emma says she is too hungry for that. Gemma goes in with her. Gemma greets Donna's secretary. He takes her to see Gemma. They ask after each other's husbands. Donna comments Gemma's Gucci bag is five years too old and asks what is the reason for the visit. Lulu also comes to the establishment. The girls gossip about Gemma's appearance, saying she has gotten old. Thomas tells them to respect their elders. Gemma was glorious in her prime. The girls laugh it off. Once a always a Gemma reveals she wants to sell her land to Donna because she was broke. Donna comments the land is not in a choice part of town. She mocked the poverty of Gemma's husband. Meanwhile, one of Donna's girls tried to bully Emma. Emma was not having any of it. Donna says she can loan her the money on the condition that she participates in Chief Nkem's party. Gemma does not like that idea. Gemma pleads. Donna insists. Ma, carry my toto. Go to her shoutings. Come give them. You know if you carry on, go take and do the same thing. 
Gemma walks out. Donna walks into her girls and Emma fighting. She asks who let Emma in and Tommy says Gemma. Donna takes up the challenge of pimping Emma. Tommy takes her for medical checkup. She is introduced to the rest of the girls and was given an apartment. She gets taken out for shopping where she displays some bush girl behavior. <laughs> Tommy educates her on the ways of the world. You test and you Spread. She gets new hair and clothes. Lulu's husband calls her to let her know he is back in the country and is coming to visit her. She is shocked. Emma presents herself to Madame Donna, who comments her improved appearance. Donna introduces Emma to her husband. Donna needed to verify Emma's skill set, so her interview involved some knacking of her husband. Poor man. Lulu calls Donna to ask for her next course of action regarding her husband's return. What can I do? Send him back or he'll catch you. No, he won't Cockled. Donna takes Emma out for a car show and driving lessons. Donna meets up with one of her girls named Helion. She's drunk. Donna slaps her for a disrespectful comment. The girl apologizes. Lulu lies to her husband she's going out to finish up on a client's dress. Are you going out? She all about them diamonds and pearls. Sapa forces Gemma to consider Donna's offer. The girls arrive at the party. Tommy compliments and ushers them in. Gemma also comes for the party. Emma meets Gemma during the party. She's not looking the best for her. Let's take one thing. I never did Gemma pairs up with the owner of the hotel. His name is Alexander. Or Alex. After a brief introduction, he asks directly. Can we fuck Gemma? No time. Each of the girls got hold of a man except for Emma. While in the room, Alex asks Gemma for her story. She was reluctant to share and asks for his. He says he's just a lucky. She was fidgety, saying it's been a while since she did it. He says she doesn't have to if she feels like it, but she insists. Emma ends up encountering Inzeribe, the bodyguard who got her fired at the strip club. You! He reveals the trick with which he set her up. You be reading. <laughs> you be reading. He tries to make it up to her by introducing her to his boss, Shegun Baba Lola. He was rather busy with the soccer match. They watch the match together. Emma gets invited for the subsequent weekend hookup hangout, and she's excited. The girls have fun in the weekend. Finally, Emma has reached Fornay levels after two days overseas. Looks like I have butlers of my own. I want a Bellini. She starts playing mind games with the bodyguard in Zeribe. Gemma's husband dies. Alex was there to comfort her. Their relationship could now continue without guilty conscience. Shegun Babalola buys Emma a car. He also introduces her to one of his banker friends and recommends her for a manager position in Axis Bank. Lulu throws a birthday party for her kids. Helion is pregnant and she tells Donna she wants to keep the baby and quit the business. Gemma got engaged to Alexander, but her kid, Essay, is not happy about it. Uncle Daddy comes to the birthday party. Uncle Daddy! <laughs> Emma gets challenged at the bank by Babalola's daughter and embarrass her. Emma complains to Chief Babalola. Unfortunately, Chief has found out she used to strip for money. He commands her to strip. Nzeribe tries to leave, but Babalola forces him to stay and watch. She runs out. Nzeribe advises her to do the dance for Chief. They knock. <laughs> Luisa's husband comes to her workplace that night to search for her. He pulls out a cutlass and asks where the man is. He opens a door and sees something that shocks him and drops the cutlass. We never know what he saw. Gemma's son, Essay, is ill. They are at Alexander's place. Alex reveals to Gemma he is really an accountant for a cabal of rich men. Gemma wakes up to find that Alex was not in bed. She opens the door to find something shocking. Donna comes to Alex's house, pretending to deliver furniture. She sneaks in to find the room scattered and Gemma in tears. Turns out Alex was violating Esse, Gemma's son, and Gemma killed him. They stuff his corpse in the furniture and take it out. Lulu's husband takes the kids, leaves her and threatens her to keep sending money for their upkeep, 
or else he will expose her secret that we never get to find out. Helion dies from drug overdose. They have a funeral. Chief Nken comes to see Donna and tells her the rich men who are Alex's client want their money back because Alex has disappeared. He was trying to find out if Gemma knew something about his disappearance. Or if Gemma was involved, Donna covers up for Gemma. Men from Chief Nkem harass the girls. Donna tells Gemma she needs to come back to the business and leave her son with the rest of his family. Otherwise, she would look guilty. Donna meets Chief Nkem's wife and tries bribing her to get Chief Nkem to stop harassing her girls. Luisa and Emma come to see Donna regarding the harassment. We don't they watch Netflix now, we thank God the Product placement. Donna pays a visit to the original Glamour Mamas to intervene on the issue of the cabal. They ask for what they stand to gain and she offers her eternal gratitude. Done. They ask her to wait. They were useless. Emma wakes to find herself tied and the rest of the girls shot dead. <laughs> it was a nightmare. Nzeribe asks her what the nightmare was about. She tells him the truth regarding Alex's disappearance. He tells her they are in serious trouble as the amount of money involved is humongous. Gemma returns to Alex's house to find clues on how to get the money back. She finds a flash drive under the bed. Nzeribe gets a hacker to break into the flash drive. He convinces Emma that they take a share of the money and run. The hacker says he won't complete the job until he gets a piece of Emma's action. Nzeribe convinces her to agree. Donna comes around and notices there are two flash drives. The hacker successfully accesses the flash drive. They discover there's 21 billion US dollars on it. Donna insists they give the flash drive back. Nzeribe gives her a dummy flash and sneakily picks the original. She had already called Chief to come collect it. Chief comes with armed men. Donna gives him the flash but it turned up empty. Nzeribe then accuses the ladies of conniving to run away with the money. Thieving bastard. They play a game of who has the flash. He hides the flash in Emma's outfit, then accuses her. Sir, I believe Emma has it. Fortunately, she had learned her lesson from the first time he tricked her. She had returned the flash in his pocket. Nziribe was caught with the flash and apprehended. It's a trick. A setup. Chief confirms the cabal had received their monies. The amount was 15 billion. Donna had miraculously extracted the balance of six billion dollars. Who wants to party? Party, party. Gemma says she wants nothing to do with the money. Emma says likewise, but she comes back. The moral lesson of this movie is, this movie has no morals. We love movies that portray a glamorous lifestyle with an incoherent plot. This is your movie. Welcome to Glamour. <laughs> Please subscribe, like and share for more Nolly Crunch content.